Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, this talk um, was born out of curiosity because uh, we are engineers or we people are curious human beings and that's what drives everything. And first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mike Jimenez. I'm a PhD student. You can contact me in any of social network using this handler, but by all means, try to talk to me afterwards. I'm super happy to discuss everything. And if you, are, you have crazy doubts about tiny things, yeah, we are going to talk. First of all, uh, all the memes in this presentation are based on Drag Race. If you love uh, Python and Drag Queens, please talk to me because we are going to have a lovely chat. It's June, so it's proud month. Uh, be proud of your identities. We are a welcoming community and we would like to be welcome no matter who you are. With no further ado, let's begin with the talk. So do you know this uh, sentence, stand in the shoulder of giants? So this talk is uh, basically my take on the Brandon Rhodes audio taxi in a row. It's an amazing talk. He is an amazing speaker. Uh, by all means, check this talk. He is going to do it way better than I do, but I have different questions, so I ask different questions. So he said in this talk, the least is the most dangerous data structures. And I said, okay, Brandon, I use lists every day, so what I am doing wrong? What's happening here? That was my reaction. So let's begin with the list constructor. 101, this should be easy. We have a uh, list constructor and a literal. A uh, list uh, constructor will get an iterable and will get us back a mutable object. And yeah, basically that's a list. Uh, we can say, okay, list, give me a, I will send you a string and I want an array or thing of things. And if I give, give uh, the literal another list, it will be a list. The empty spaces are not there because I am lazy, there's a meaning behind there. We will figure it out at the end of this talk. But at the beginning. So the Python fan tells us there should be one and preferably only one to do things. So which of the built-in uh, constructor of the list would be better? Show me, what do you think that would be better? The first one, the first one or the second one? Sorry? Let's go with performance. Second one. Second one, all agree? You're totally true. The second one is actually, well, I switched them. So the first one is way faster. Why is that? Because I think it's in the next slide, yeah. Um, the built-in needs to call the functions. They need to build the function and they need to build us our list. So if you trace back what's happening when you call the list, it's going to call built-in, load it in memory, and return us our lovely list. While the literal, then two brackets, knows how to do it. It's like, okay, you gave me two, two brackets, I know that's a list, let's make the thing. So yeah, but the takeoff, it's, if it's Pythonic, it's faster. Everything that is built for a language, it will be faster because the things that you most use will be always faster, um, will be better. Strange things that always bother new beginners, like, okay, why the list is return me? If I gave a list of string, it will be returning me a list of character. Why is that? Because I said that the list gets an iterable and a string is an iterable, so it will iterate over every character and will return me back every character in a new position. While the, um, list, display, the list display, the literal, will get the thing and store memory for a string. What's happening with the iterable? It's, so yeah. I have a list of arrays and then I build in, I get an ID, so, I don't remember what was the meaning behind this. So yeah, let's say for a while. Index in a list. Okay, so we have two ways to access elements in a list. We can go count forward or backward, which makes very useful in some cases. Sometimes you want to get the prefix, sometimes you want to get the suffix. 
So how can a list access every element of uh, every position at a constant time? So then, okay, uh, you can get me the tenth character in the same time then you can get me the second character. How does the Python does it? So I know that the list starts at some position. Let's say it starts at the address zero. And I know that the character is one byte. Let's go with this assumption. I know this is not totally true. And if I want to get to the is character, I will multiply and I go straight forward to this address. But um, Python list doesn't have to have one type. In a list, they can have multiple types. So how is this possible? Is it a linked list? Is it a double linked list? How is this going to be a constant time accessing a list? So let's go deeper. Let's see how the lovely people from CPython actually built the list. So first of all, if I see how, uh, how a space is taking an empty list, it's zero, cool. But if I see how, many, how much space is taken in memory, in memory, it's 64 bytes. What's happening? What, but the, the, the list is empty. What the hell? So, what the documentation says? The documentation says this. There's not a linked list, it's a continuous array of reference of objects. Uh, what does this mean? This is the struct. We have a macro thing, the build things. We have a vector of pointers and a memory allocated. The memory, we want to know how, how much memory we have actually allocated. And this is the nice vector. So we have a macro and tells us what, times of, what type of things we have. The size of the object, so here we have a list of three elements, and we have this link to list of addresses. So I don't care if the actual object that is in the list is a character, a list, wherever. It's only an address, it's a list of addresses. And then I have another parameter, it's like, okay, how much memory I have actually allocated? And here is fourth. So if I wanted to add a new object, I, need, I have still a I have still half a space, which is super cool. Oh, no, 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 not so fast. So yeah, we have learned things. Uh, we know that the empty list has things, have created things, and if I create an empty list, and then I happen a new element, uh, or if I create a list with only one element, is this going to have the same size? What do you think? Is it? Yes? No, yes? Okay, the actual answer is no. Uh, the size of the uh, empty list is, of a list with an element is 72 bytes. The size of a list where we have actually opened an element is 96. And why is that? Because, yeah, <laughs> that should be re your reaction. Why is that? Let's start from the beginning. So an empty list is 64 bytes because we have, we remember that we need to have this structure in place. And when we open an element, we have 72. So what's happening? When I create a list, sorry, I will have, I have, uh, when I create a list with one element, I said, okay, lovely built-in constructor, could you please uh, allocate me memory for one element? So list says, okay, I'm going to allocate you memory for one item. And this is what is happening behind the scenes. So when you open an element, there's some cleverness. I highlighted the cleverness because it's really clever. So it never allocates more things than you need. Like if you don't need to allocate new, new memory, by all means, don't do it and they have a growth pattern. So every time that you want to open things and you don't have enough space, it's going to allocate more memory because if you want to open a new things and you run out of memory every time, it's going to be crazy. You need to copy every element to a new position every time you do an event, so you don't want that. So you grow, you first start with a zero, then you multiply by four. Well, it's actually, yeah, it's minor allocation. What's happening? Let's see with picture, I'm a graphic art person. So when I open an element, I allocate memory for four elements, even the only one is there. So that's why it's different. 
let's go through the least dangers. There's a lot of dangers in no one is safe here. To one line offenders. I find this very often that there's some mistake that I actually do as well. Like there are some operations that seems then it's going to take one second, like it's going to be a constant time, but it's actually not. Like appending, appending an element, it's going to be ODN in some cases where we have seen the example that if I run out of memory, I need to allocate new memory, I need to copy all the elements. And okay, let's start with the basic one, the in element. In is really crazy because you think, okay, if an element is in a list, it's one liner, it's okay. So what's happening, for example, if I said, okay, is nine in the list? If it's the first element, yeah, it is. Party, that's, it's great. But what happens if it's not in the list at all? Like the worst case scenario, it goes through the first element, it's not the first element, so we go to the second element, it's not the second element, we go through the third, third element, it's neither the third element, so we, have, we need to go through all elements in the list in order to figure it out. Okay, this element is actually not in the list. So that's a danger. The insert, insert is also a danger one. So let's go through the worst example. Like I want to insert two at the beginning of this list, which is actually should be one, two, one, three, four. Pardon my mistake. So the thing that it's going to do is push back everything, so they need to move things around in order to make space for the new element, and then I insert the element in the proper position. So even though it's only one line, it's going to be O-N, it's going to take a lot of time. We are looking at small examples, but it's going to be really dangerous if we are handling huge lists. So the slicing operator, the slicing operator for me was is the worst at all of all the offenders because a slicing operator makes a copy of the list, which is bad. Well, it's amazing for accessing fast uh, things, but it's bad because we don't know exactly what we are doing. If we don't know what we are doing, it's going to be tricky. Yeah, so what does the slice do? They find the positions that you want to slice, takes the higher, the lower, and creates a new list. Is basically you are creating a copy of the list that you have from the scratch, which is bad. Do you remember how many operations do we need to do where we were creating elements in a list? So there are, these are the examples of how the slicing operator works. Uh, you set the lower bound, the upper bound, uh, and it will return you the positions. So keep in mind always that you can go forward and backward and a culture you can get. So yeah, the second line is what the actual, the commented line is what the actual compiler does for you. Like we don't need to put where does the end, the list should end. So if I say slice to the end, it will replace it and it will replace also the stride. We can move into steps and there's cool things like I can reverse a list if I tell it, hey, I want all the lists, but I want the step to be on the other side, counting for backward. And we also have the reverse operation in the list, which is in place. We don't need to do a copy. So think if you need a performance, you might don't want to do the slicing operator, you might want to do the reverse one. And okay, so cool thing. If you don't have a list, if your list is actually a matrix, you will have this list of reference will be a new list. So if you use the slicing operator to, to copy things, you are actually not, you're going to get a new list, but the elements of the list will be a reference of the previous list. So you actually don't have a copy, but Python people know it better and you have div copy. So if you want to have an actual copy of a matrix, you just call div copy and it does it for you. Removing flavors. There's different ways of removing things in a list. So I'm going to straight forward to go to the example, it's quite better. So if we want to remove the, the element, the number one is going to look for the first occurrence of the element 
and it's going to take it away. Again, it's like the in operator. If uh, the element is at the beginning, we are so, it's great because it's going to take no time. It, if it's at the end, it's going to be really bad. And it's fun, oh, I did it a mistake, yeah. So you want to remove, remove is the element at the position if, so it looks for the two, and takes the two to recycling, and again, needs to push elements so the list stays in the correct way. Another way is to remove. We can remove the first matching element with remove, and we can delete the element of an index. So Dean has a strange syntaxes, I guess, but this is still Python, it's Python 3. So, yeah. And pop, okay, pop is not actually dangerous because if you want to pop the last element of the list, it's going to be super fast. The problem is that we are not so clever and sometimes you want to pop some from some parts of the list, which is going to be problematic. And yeah, going to go to a sorted list and I will finish there so my chair doesn't kill me. Uh, Sorting things. Which algorithm do you think then sorting is implemented in Python? Sorry? Yeah, you did your homework. Yeah, team sort. Uh, it's super cool to have our own algorithm. So yeah, we have the sort and the sort that you can sort on place, you can sort uh, and returns a new element. Again, remember if you are sorting and returning a new uh, list, you are getting a copy of the list, so this is going to be expensive and sort the list way faster. And the sorting algorithm, algorithm is actually how the audience knows, team sort. It's, um, in a nutshell, it's a mix between merge sort and insert sort, goes through the whole list, tries to figure out where the, this thing, this natural runs, like places where the, uh, the, the array is already sorted, and then, yeah, makes a mix of merge and insertion sort, which is makes n log n, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, I finally finished. So I have time for questions. Yeah, great. So I, st I talk super fast, isn't it? Yeah, um, great. So yeah, we have, we have some time for questions, please. Uh, yeah, right. sorry. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we can have a couple so, of questions. Yeah. I'm not sure whether this microphone... I can yeah, it's working. I, okay, uh, it was I can <laughs> repeat the question. So, uh, any question? Yeah, we have one here. Sorry, I tend to talk too fast. <laughs> Thanks very much, that was really Thank illuminating. You. Can you go back a few slides, please? Yeah, of course. To where you had the um, delete in the, uh, just a, uh, I think one, there we are. One okay. forward from there. No, one, next slide. Next? That one. Okay, okay. cool. Okay. So can you explain why there is this apparently so different syntax for deleting an item from a list when all the other operations seem to be uh, methods on the list. I think this is very yeah. uh, unsettling for people who encounter it. Why is there such a completely different looking syntax? I honestly have no clue, but I know that we have C Python developers here, so we can <laughs> ask them. But yeah, actually, uh, sometimes it's different, it's difficult because uh, the deal, it's, it's not following like the proper Python syntax. So actually it's a, uh, the one that it's always forgotten because it's like, okay, this must not be Python, but it actually is. I, I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but yeah. The, there's always a reason, a that reason. <laughs> we can ask later, maybe we can find someone who will yeah. give an answer. <laughs> um, is there more questions somewhere? Okay. So it seems that's all. That's all. Thank you. Um, thank you very much again. Thank you. Um, yeah.